Hi, I'm John Bailey, gemstone artist and founder of the Faceting Academy, and I want to welcome you to an introduction to faceting and your new modern faceting machine. I recommend you watch this entire video, it isn't that long, before you continue with unboxing your new machine. I know everyone says that, and nobody does it. I typically don't do it myself, but if you will just, just watch the video. You'll protect yourself from some potential damage to your machine, damage to your other materials, maybe damage some stones. Uh, you protect yourself from damage and save yourself some time and money in the long run. So this is not a how to facet video. That subject is way too involved for one little video to cover. So if you want detailed instructions in how to facet, you can check out facetingacademy.com where we have a bunch of free instruction and also some more in-depth stuff that you can get into if you like. This video is just to help you unbox, assemble, use, and care for your new precision faceting machine. To make this video easy to use and so you can refer back to it for specific information, it's organized in nine separate parts. The first part is the introduction you're watching right now. That'll include some basic background about what modern faceting is all about. The second part is unboxing your new modern faceting machine. And that includes what are you going to find in the box, how it's going to be organized, and how to handle the parts as you unwrap them to make sure you don't damage anything. The third part of this DVD is the assembly of your new faceting machine. That includes some tips and tricks to help prevent damage and to maximize the function and extend the life and the health of your machine. That's worth a few minutes, trust me. Part four of this DVD is how to disassemble and ship your modern faceting machine. That includes some detailed hints that will save time and prevent damage to your machine when you disassemble it for storage or for shipping, whether you're moving it to a new location or whether you're sending it back to the manufacturer for service. Use of your modern faceting machine is in part five of the DVD. That includes some comments on accessories and standard procedures, things to help you understand the machine and how to be successful with it, and a list of serious no-nos that could lead to damage in the machine or that uh, some of the gems that you might be working with. Part six of the DVD is about troubleshooting, and that's like how to know what's causing some really common problems or what it may mean if you hear an unusual sound coming from the machine. Part seven is the cleaning and maintenance of your machine when and how to clean the machine, and what special maintenance tasks you should schedule and always do to make these machines last. Modern fastening machines can last you the rest of your life. It's 20, 40, 50 years with a very small amount of maintenance and care. So if you just do those things, these things will last you a long time. You've made a significant investment. Take the time and check it out how that's supposed to work. Part eight of this DVD is calibration. It's how to check and calibrate the machine to ensure accuracy and fun and easy fastening in the protractor or the angle control of the machine. You almost never need to do this unless the machine's been banged or injured or unless you've been using it really heavily for a really long period of time. Mostly they come calibrated from the factory. They should be dead on. You do not need to do calibration of the machine before you start using it. This is just information for far down the road. The ninth part of this DVD I call sighting in the rifle, or how to precision align the cheater or the fine adjustment for perfect post-transfer girdles, no stair-stepping. This is something that you may want to do with your fastening machine. It's not very complicated and it's one of the things that helps you uh, get used to handling the machine and moving different parts of it around, understanding how the cheater fine adjustment works. So now, let's get started with the introduction to what exactly is faceting anyway? What are you going to be doing? And most people think that they know what that is if they're buying a machine. Faceting is placement of polished reflective surfaces on a piece of transparent gem material to maximize the appearance and therefore the value of that gem. In colored stones, about 70% of the value is in the quality and presentation of the color. So we want to keep that in mind when planning and polishing our facets. There's a big difference between modern faceting and jam peg faceting. And not everyone is clear on that, but it's really very simple. In jam peg faceting, that's just putting facets around a chunk of stone. You've got a chunk of stone, just put facets all around the stone, just however the stone is shaped usually, to reflect some light and make it sparkle a little bit. 
So the facets are aligned around the lump of material. In modern faceting, all the facets are built around the center line uh, of the bearings on the head of the faceting machine. So everything's built around a center perfect axis. Jam peg faceting, or primitive faceting, sometimes they call it native cutting, it does not have really a true center line. It just has a stone with facets on it. Modern faceting is all based on that center line. That's why we can do really accurate cuts, really cool optical things, and why we have real high repeatability so all the different stones that we may cut in one design, they'll all look just the same. So it's important to remember what you're doing with a modern faceting machine. A lot of people will cut and look and, and continue to look between every time they touch the stone to the lap and then they'll adjust the machine a lot and that's really using the machine like a jam peg machine and it's important to remember that once you stop using the precision indicator uh, on your modern machine and start placing facets by eye you're actually doing jam peg faceting and once you start doing jam peg faceting you're stuck placing facets by eye for the remainder of the stone. So learn when you're learning to use the machine, learn to use the indicator, cut by the needle on the indicator and not by eye. And that takes some getting used to, but once you do that, you can do really high precision fastening. So a fastening machine requires just three things. Just three things. The first is we need to control the angle of the, uh, the stone touching the lap. And that's done with a thing called a protractor. It's measuring and controlling angle. You have the, the quill of the machine and it's controlling the stone. The second thing is we need to control the rotation of the stone so we can place facets around that stone in uh, equal increments or controlled increments. The, a machinist would call the device for doing that a dividing head. In faceting we call it an index gear. The last thing you need is a flat lap something that runs relatively flat and true compared to the protractor and the dividing head or index gear to cut the stone on. Three things. Control the angle, control the rotation, and a flat surface to cut the stone on. That's all you need. More modern machines also have things like precision depth of cut controls, precision rotational adjustment so that they're not relying just on every tooth in the index gear but so you can actually go between the teeth that's commonly called a cheater. We might also have high precision orientation between the parts uh, of the machine so that you can have high repeatability. The, the main thing in a modern machine is high repeatability. That's the main thing you're paying money for in your modern machine. So that when you go to a certain index on the gear and a certain angle and you work the stone at a certain grit, when you come back to the stone later to do a finer grit, when you hit that same index gear and that same angle, that stone is going to be precisely on the lap, again, in that exact location. So as you step from one grit to another and from finally the pre-polish to the polish, you're not adding multiple facets or trying to roll and tweak it around. It's very precise and coming back to the same place. That's what you're paying for with your precision machine. If you should look into buying a used machine, Always call the manufacturer and ask him to look at that machine. If you're buying it on eBay, a guy like Jeff Jarvie, just call him up. He'll look at the same machine for you and he'll tell you, oh, I know that serial number. I know how old it is. Uh, it looks like it's missing this. It looks like, oh, this might be worn a little bit. Call the manufacturer and ask them about the cost and the turnaround to refurbish or repair the machine. Things like changing the bearings or recalibrating the head. Those are really important and it'll save you a lot of time and money because what seems like a bargain on eBay, by the time you pay to have the machine brought up to spec so it's going to work for you, you may wind up spending more than you would for buying a new machine. One of the main comments I want to make about having a new high precision faceting machine is that a lot of people will think they're going to save a little bit of money and they'll buy cheap topper laps, the little thin guys that go on top of a master lap, or they'll buy cheap aftermarket DOPs that weren't made by the manufacturer of the machine. And those are two things that are going to cost you a lot more time in the long run than they're going to save you if you just buy good stuff to begin with. If you're buying a real coarse roughing lap, like a 260 or more coarse than that, yeah, you can use those little toppers. Once you get down into a 600 lap for cutting your main cutting tool, 
or it is certainly into your pre-polished laps, buy a good lap. Invest the money. It'll more than pay for itself in time. And also with the aftermarket DOPS. I've had a lot of guys to the Faceting Academy that came here with these really junky aftermarket DOPS. I've seen them literally fall out of the quill because their, their uh, specifications are way off. So you don't want that. It's going to cause problems in your transfers. It's going to be a huge headache. Skip the cheapy laps. Skip the junk aftermarket DOPS. So that's the introduction part of this DVD. The next chapter is about unboxing your new machine.